doing the pot test. Um, but I also want to make it clear that the pot test is not, I'm going to say that quite strongly, is not the reason why they buy. The pot test is the reason why they buy today. Because the sale should already have taken place when we're talking about the health problems, the enemies to, to nutrition, the carrot test, the solutions page, the cooking and everything else. The sale should have already taken place within the customer's, move my camera, um, within the customer's brain. But a lot of people will be saying, I'm going to get it, but I'm going to get it in the future. But the pot test is truly the buy it now. This is the reason why they buy it today. Why? Because they don't want that pollution in their food from the very next meal. And it's a very strong part of the um, part of the presentation. And, and please don't get me wrong that um, I'm saying that that's not why they buy. It's not strictly true. Sometimes people go, OK, I need it, but I need it now. And that truly is what I mean by, by what I've just said. But one thing I want to make clear with, with uh, the pollution test as well is... We've got to eliminate doubt because you'll understand what I mean by this. If we plant a seed of doubt into the customer's brains, if they doubt what we're saying or what we're doing, then that can undo everything that we've done in the entire presentation. Please don't be scared, but I'm going to give you a few things today which are wonderful things for us to look out for when we're putting the pot test on when we're um, when the pot test has boiled and so on and so forth. I'm going to give you one or two little guidelines today on tremendous things that we've got to be watching out for and things that we shouldn't be doing. But also at the same time, what I really want to be focusing on today um, is to how to really um, use the pot test to close the sale. That's that's number one but also how we can use it to get more leads, but also how we can use it to actually recruit. So these are the areas that we're going to be focusing on, but I'm going to get into the, the content of the um, of the pollution test itself. So the pollution test itself, when we are putting the pollution test on, the first thing that, that I, um, I want to get across to you guys is take everybody into the kitchen to see the pot test when it is set up. Take everybody. Now, we do understand that one or two people have said to me, oh, I only take one person. But imagine this. Um, uh, imagine I've got Nelly and Solomon. I'm doing a dinner for Nelly and Solomon today. And I only take Solomon in to put the pot test on. Fast forward to later, when Nelly and, and Solomon are both tasting the water, if Nelly hasn't seen the pot test set up, would you agree that there would be an element of doubt in Nelly's mind? Would you agree? Yes or no? Yeah. So we must take everybody because and I've seen it come in through the years where sometimes people just go, oh, can you come with me? We're going to put the pot test on. Don't take everybody through. Because if we don't, this is when you can plant a seed of doubt, because if Nelly doesn't see the pot test put on when she tastes it, she might go. Oh, not, not, not saying this to us, but thinking it. Whoa, what did what did Andy do here? What did he put into each one of these? Because they taste different. They should all be tasting the same. So this is why I say take everybody in because that eliminates doubt. And that's that's number one. When you're putting the pot test on, um, let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever had the pot test boil dry when you've done it? OK, <laughs> I'm only up to that. <laughs> We've all had it boil dry from from time to time. One reason can be that we don't quite put enough water in. You can see my glass today. It's quite a large glass, but I've got it sort of three quarters full, not completely full, but three quarters. If we only put a small amount of water in, then that can actually lead to one of the reasons why it boils dry. But also, if we only put a small amount of water in, later on, even with the Salad Master one, it still has a horrible taste because of the amount of bicarb. So in order to eliminate that one, again, is to put about three quarters of a pint. Do, do you use pints as a measurement in, in Nigeria? 
I don't know whether you use pints or, or litres. It's about three quarters. Um, I don't know what a pint is. Just over half a litre, I think. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'll find out. I'll, I'll Google that before the end. But we, we use pints here in the UK. So, in fact, we are quite strange here in, in the UK. We sort of, we use metric and we use the old imperial measurements. We're sort of stuck between the two. We don't know which one to use. So, um, when the pot test is now on and it's got to boil vigorously for five minutes, it's got to boil, and I don't mean have the heat on for five minutes because sometimes the water can take a while to come up to boiling. It has to boil vigorously for five minutes. Then take somebody in with you when you're turning it off. Just say, um, uh, Abraham, can you come with me? just to make sure that they're all boiling and to make sure I don't go near them. Think about that. Imagine we're doing a show with Nelly and Solomon and Abraham and his wife. And I say that out loud. Abraham, can you come with me just to make sure they're boiling and to make sure that I don't go near the pots? Because if you're only taking one in, then everybody else might say, oh, did they put something in when they went in? So never go back in on your own to turn them off always have somebody with you and when you go back in just say Abram did I go anywhere near them or did I just turn them off Abraham would say no you just turn them off okay great now if they're not quite boiling let them boil. because sometimes some are boiling and some are not sometimes we may have to move them onto a, a different ring because sometimes the rings um, burn at different temperatures or um, ferocity but this is a key one now hi Nelly I see you there now. Um, the water now, once you turn it off, a process called steeping is taking place. And the colder the water goes, or the cooler the water goes, the more the taste develops. So we should never be tasting the water when it's still hot. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever ha had a hot drink? And when you taste it, you go, oh, ha, ha and you burn your mouth and you actually wouldn't know whether it was tea coffee green tea because our taste buds when the heat hits them they just go and they close down have you have you ever experienced that when you drink a hot drink and it just you all you feel is the sensation of of heat it isn't necessarily the drink that you are drinking so the water's got to go cold the colder it goes the better it is however and this is a key thing and hopefully many of you are already viewing the pot test like this. But well, this is, I want to get it across to us. Write this down. We are not showing the customers that the water tastes horrible. So we are not showing the customers that the water tastes horrible. We are not showing the customers that the water tastes horrible. We are not showing the customers that the water tastes horrible. We are showing them that they taste different. So we are not showing the customers that the water tastes horrible. We are showing them that they taste different. And this is how I want you to view the pot test. So we're not showing them that the water tastes horrible. We are showing them that it tastes different and it's that key word different let me ask you this has anybody ever had the objection of you know, i've got i've got some old pots here okay i keep them on top of my cupboards <laughs> um has anybody ever had it where somebody will say ah the stainless steel one doesn't taste as bad as this one has anybody ever had that where they say that yeah and that can be because Sometimes we're not actually demonstrating the pot test as uh, as it tasting different. We're showing that we're saying, oh, this one tastes horrible. That's not the purpose of the test. The purpose of the test is that we put water and bicarbonate of soda into all four or all three or all five, however many it is. And they should all taste the same. However, they don't. They all taste different 
I was hoping somebody was going to shout it out. I was trying to lip read everybody on there. And this is the key thing. Because once you understand from our point of view that we're not showing them that they taste horrible, we're showing them that they taste different, you deliver the, the, the um, pot test in a completely different way. Because then that eliminates the objection of, well, that one doesn't taste as bad as that one, and that one's worse than that one, so I'm going to use that one. So by showing them that they, we've put the same into all four, so would you agree they should all taste the same? Yes, will be the answer from the customers. So again, we're not showing them they taste horrible, we're showing them that they taste different. That's the key thing. So let me now go in. Oh, one more thing. Once the pot test has been put on and it's cooling down, never go back into the kitchen on your own. Never. If you do have to go back into the kitchen for some reason, always take somebody with you. So, for example, if I had to go back into the kitchen, I'd say, uh, Nelly, can you come in with the kitchen, uh, come into the kitchen with me to make sure I don't go near the pot test? By saying that, you're telling everybody else in the house that you're going nowhere near the pot test. Because think about this. If you go back into the kitchen on your own, even for five seconds, you may go in and later when they taste it, they go, oh, what? And they go, ah, hang on a minute. Oh, hang on. Abraham went back into the kitchen on his own. Did he go in and did he go? <laughs> and did he put something else in? So always take somebody into the kitchen with you just to make sure that you don't go near anything. And if you've got a trainee with you, because sometimes you may have somebody else, a helper or somebody on the on the dinner. And one always springs into mind. It was probably about 2010, 2011. And I was training a, 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 a new person and I was cooking for his family. I can't remember whether it was auntie or uncle or cousins or some, somebody like that. And I was, and then we turned the pot test off. We'd all gone into the kitchen. We turned it off. He then said, I'll go and do the dishes. And I said, no, it's okay. Stay here. And he said, no, 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 I don't mind. I'll go and do the dishes. Because he thought he was being helpful in doing the dishes. And I said, no, please stay here. Because I don't want you to go anywhere near the cookware. And he went, oh, okay. And I had told him this in training. But think about it again. It's about eliminating doubt if if somebody is in the kitchen and later on they taste it and they go oh but hang on a minute oh cosmos was in the kitchen on his own doing the dishes did he tamper with them oh cosmos i'm not saying that you would but you understand what can go through the customer's brains if they think that it's been tampered with and then they go oh no 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 if they don't trust that it then unravels and undoes all of the work that we've done in the previous two and a half hours. So never go back into the kitchen on your own or never let a new trainee go back into the kitchen on his own. These are key things that if it would be innocent, we know that we don't go in and we know that we don't tamper with them, but it's about letting the customers know that we are not tampering with them. That is the key thing. It's about eliminating doubt. So let me, oh, oh. sorry guys. I just brought it up on my screen again before the training and it's disappeared on me. Go back in. Okay, and screen share. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send a little video over to you guys straight away. I've got a video of us on here. Um, where are we? Uh, food pharmacy. Hi team, so exactly what you get out. Okay, that's the right one. And Neo Continental. Okay. I've just set a little video. It's for training purposes and, and it will be, it will all become apparent in a second. So you don't need to watch the video yet. 
Okay, so we've now done the, uh, let me ask you, Nelly and Solomon, do you do the pot test after the set description or before? Which way? After the set description. Yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly the same. Wonderful. Just wanted to, to clarify. So we've done the set description. We've got the people to choose the set that they want to go with. We now go back into the kitchen to do the pot test itself. So all you're going to hear me do now is read from the back of the flip chart. In essence, this is the script that will be on the flip chart. And you can see that many of these words are in bold. So we've got to emphasize the words that are in bold. I am going to get one or two of you to have a little go at doing this in a second, but it is fairly simple and it's just about reading the words on the flip chart. So I'm going to present as if I'm doing it to, let's do it to um, Abram. Abram, I'm going to do it to you as if you're the customer. So what we're doing here is showing you a pollution test. We're not having a go at your cookware, but only showing you why Salad Master had to use such a high grade of steel. Again, we're giving you the information that nobody wants you to know so you can make the right decision for you and your family. Now, Abraham. Could you taste any of the vegetables in the cake? Or how many of you tasted the vegetables in the cake? No, none. None. Okay, why? Uh, the taste of the chocolate. Yeah, spot on. Because the, the, the chocolate taste or chocolate flavour masks the taste of the veg. Now, if we take that one step further and take the chocolate out, what would you taste? Mm, the veg. Yeah, spot on, the vegetables. Now let's take that one step further and take the vegetables out. What you're actually left with is the natural minerals, one of which is bicarbonate of soda. That's why we're using bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. It's a natural mineral, which is what Alka-Seltzer, the antacid, is made from. It's what makes bread rise and lemonade fizzy. Okay, that's simple. That's simple and straightforward. We're just reading from here. But this part here is where you're asking the questions to the customers. Because let's be truthful. Hands up who's had it where somebody has said, yes, I can taste the vegetables. Hands up when, when somebody will say, oh, I can taste the radish. <laughs> we, we all get it from time to time. Now, we know that they can't. It's highly unlikely that they can. Somebody once said to me, I can taste celery. OK, when, when I, I, I can taste the celery in there. And this was a, a, an event where we pre-made the cakes. They hadn't seen them made. There was no celery in the cake. <laughs> but, but the customer told me that they could taste the celery. So sometimes people, people think that they can, but we know that they actually can't. So, in fact, let's do it. Abraham, I want you to, to read this to me, please. Just do the, the top section, which I've just done there, please. Okay. Uh, what we're going, what we're doing here is showing you a pollution test. We're not having a go at your cookware, but only showing you why Salad Master had to use such a high grade of steel. Again, we're giving you information that nobody wants you to know. So you can make the right decision for you and your family. How many of you, or uh, so how many of, you tasted the vegetables in the cake. That no, is the... no, I couldn't. I couldn't taste any. Uh, why? Um, I don't know. I could just taste sort of chocolate. That's all I could taste. Exactly. Uh, because the chocolate flavor of the cake marks the vegetable. If we take it one step forward and take the chocolate out, what would you taste? Uh... Well, the cabbage and, and, and everything that went in there. Exactly. Now let's take one step further. Take the cabbage or the vegetable out. All that's left are the natural minerals. That's why we're using bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. It's a natural mineral. It's what Alka shells are made from made from and it's what makes bread rise and lemonade fizzle okay Wonderful. sorry okay. I, I, i'm using the phone the right ups are extremely tiny ah you're okay you did you did perfect you did fine but look let me ask you do you have alka-seltzer in in nigeria do you have alka-seltzer 
or the equivalent mm. of it's it's if you've got um a headache or or a hangover <laughs> and you put you get alka seltzer you mix it with water and psh, do you use alka seltzer uh we have two uh variants we have uh what we call it uh a labo in a local place yeah it's, okay it's something similar something similar so yeah so it, i'm guessing if you want to substitute alka seltzer to I can't remember exactly what you said, but I love you, cool. yeah, Abu cool. Okay, I'll okay, <laughs> laugh at what I'm saying, <laughs> but you, it, it, I, I'll always attempt to say it, but it, I'll probably say it wrong. Um, I like that dish with the, the food that we were talking about with the spinach in it a, a couple of weeks ago. I know I kept getting the name of that wrong, but you can substitute out because if the customers are not going to know what Alka Seltzer is, then then substitute it for the uh, Andrew's liver salts is another one that we use in this country. So you know Andrew's liver salts? Yeah, we, we have that too. Okay. So yeah. you, you substitute it for Andrew's liver salts. It's the same sort of thing. It would have bicarbonate of soda. So just to just the only reason why I say that is because it then it translates into exactly what the customers will understand. Now, this next part is the bit I want to get right. And this is the video I've just sent through to you all. If we get this section delivered correctly then it, it transforms the way the customers view what we're about to do. Because would you all agree that the customers sometimes, they don't, at this point, they don't know what we're trying to show. Sometimes they go, oh, that one's boiled more than that one, or, or that one's got a ring around the outside, or they don't quite understand what we're showing them. Would you agree with that? Sometimes they're, they're, they're a little bit nervous and unsure. These next two sentences give them clarity. And it was a lady called Effie, um, Solomon Nelly. I bet you, you remember Effie? Yeah. Effie taught me this in 2012, 2013. Because whenever I used to read this section, it didn't quite make sense. And then Effie trained me on this and it made perfect sense, not just for me, but now for the customers. So. I'm going to do it to you, Abraham, again, because to, to, to limit the, the, um, uh, the, the um, echo of, of the voice, because I'm not getting an echo from you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read it as it says it on the script, and then I'm going to elaborate on how to deliver it. So, Abraham, would it give you peace of mind to know that what you put into your saucepans is exactly what you get out? Then it says repeat. So if I say, would it give you peace of mind to know what you put into your saucepans is what you get out? The, yes. customer, the customer sort of go, yes. But then when you say, how would you feel if you found out that what you're putting into your pots is not what you're getting out? Sometimes they don't know whether that's a positive or a, or a negative. So, and this is the video I've sent over to you all so we can train on this exact section. Let me rephrase this. Abraham, would it give you peace of mind to know that what you put into your uh, saucepans is exactly what you get out? So if we put peas, corn and chicken in, we would expect to get peas, corn and chicken out. Would you agree? Exactly. Right. OK, so I've used the example of peas, corn and chicken. This is what exactly what Effie trained me. If you want to use different foods, you can. But I've always just used peas, corn and chicken because it's easy to understand. So how would you therefore feel if you found out that what you're putting into your pots is not what you're getting out? So you're putting peas, corn and chicken, but you're getting peas, corn, chicken and something else. How would that make you feel? That would be discouraging. OK, can you hear the difference now? Because when you use the peas, corn and chicken uh, analogy, they understand it now because they go, what, peace corn chicken and something else? That doesn't sound good. So now, by doing that, the customers understand that something else is coming out of the pot. So now they understand that there's something coming from the pot. That isn't good. But let's be truthful. Let me just knock this off a second. How many of us knew before we met Salad Master, that, that chemicals and metals came from our cookware. Hands up who knew that. None of us. And this is something that nobody knows. 
I never knew it, genuinely. I always had an, an inkling, though, because I had a wok at home. And whenever I cooked in this wok, the food had, a, I, can, I can almost taste it now. It was a strong, metallic -y sort of um, lemony sort of taste to it. It was disgusting when I look back. But I used to think it was that was the wok flavour. And it was the wok flavour. It was the taste coming out of the bloody wok. So only after I'd seen Salad Master did I then understand what it meant. So I'm going to deliver it again. And I, I've sent the video through. I, I did training on this in uh, Ghana on Monday, this exact uh, training we're doing today. So I've done a recording so you guys can copy it. And that's going to be part of the homework for us to do. So would it give you peace of mind to know that what we put into a saucepan is exactly what we get out? So if we put peas, corn and chicken in, we'd expect to get peas, corn and chicken out. Would you agree? Yes. OK, so how would you feel if you found out that what you're putting into your pots is not what you're getting out? So we're putting peas, corn and chicken, but we're getting peas, corn, chicken and something else. How would that make you feel? Uh, that would be discouraging. OK, so now we set the customer's brain up that they now understand that something else is coming out of their pots. So now they understand what they're going to be looking for. I need one more prop, Beverly. This next section on the on the back of the flip chart is where we talk through each of the different cookwares. Please, even if they haven't got stainless steel, still talk about it. If they haven't got cast iron, still talk about it. If they haven't got copper, still talk about it. If they haven't got aluminium, still talk about it. Read through every one. Because if you only talk about the ones that they have on their stove, on the, on the heat, on the fire, then if we don't talk about the others, then they might go, well, Andy didn't mention nonstick. Maybe I'll go and buy some nonstick because he never mentioned that. Andy didn't mention cast iron. Maybe I should go and buy some cast iron because he didn't mention that. So by talking about all of them, it eliminates that happening as well. So stainless steel, it needs water. It's a poor heat conductor and it burns and it sticks unless we use oil or water. Cast iron under a microscope. It looks just like a sponge. Rancid food collects in the pores. Cast iron cookware was made to be used on outdoor burners. After cooking, then we put it into the, the flames and burn it off. Now we just put it back into the cupboard full of old, old food and oil, which well, then will come back out into the food next time we cook. But it will also rust when washed unless oil. OK, I'm not going to read through all of them, but you read through each and every one of them again to eliminate doubt because I want to get into this section, this next bit. OK, so we read all the way down to the bottom of Teflon, all the way down. Then it says, go to the kitchen and do the tasting. See pot test appendix. Now, the next page, this isn't on the flip chart. This is something that we need to understand and we need to. Um, sorry, guys, I'm turn that off. That's an alarm reminding me for something. Um, OK, so this is appendix, not for flip chart. Uh, OK, so first explain that we put. So, Abraham, we put a glass of water into each one and a spoonful of bicarbonate soda. Would you confirm to that? OK, you witnessed it. OK, and everybody take it. This is what I'm saying. Take everybody in. So okay. what, we're, what we're simulating here is the cooking process. You can actually see the steam and the heat and the energy being wasted. This is what we do with normal cooking. Normally, I would give everybody a taste of this juice, 
And I use this one on purpose. I'm not going to show you the label on the other side because it's got the flavor written on it. But if I give you all a taste of this juice, what flavor do you think this juice is? Let's have some guesses, please. What flavor do you think this juice is? Orange. Orange. Okay. Any advance on orange? Any other flavors? What else do you think this is? Lemon and grapefruit. Okay, lemon and grapefruit. Abraham? Peach. Peach. Okay. What about in the office? In the office, what flavor do you think this juice looks like? We've got lemon and grapefruit, orange, peach. Can you hear me in the office? Maybe they can't hear. Can you hear us in the office? What flavor? Don't worry, don't worry, okay. What what flavor? Yes, answer. What flavor? Orange. Orange. Okay. Right. Orange. Okay. Normally, I would get everybody to taste the juice. Normally, I would get everybody and exactly what you guys have just done there is exactly, exactly what happens when everybody tastes it. Exactly we get somebody who says orange, taste. somebody who says uh, mango, somebody who says peach, somebody who says tropical. But as soon as I do this, are you ready? Peach. And now when you look at the colour, you go, oh, yeah, it's peach. So well done, Abram, you got it right. But this is normal. Whenever everybody tastes it, I don't tell them the flavour. And no, everybody goes, ooh, um, tropical, uh, pineapple, peach, orange. They don't quite know because our eyes look at it and we go, oh, it's, I don't know. But as soon as I tell them peach, everybody goes, Oh, yeah. So this is to prove a point. Before anybody tastes anything, we must tell them what they're going to taste, because now their brain is searching for that taste. So when you taste the bicarb, it will taste salty. It will taste fishy. It will taste like swimming in the sea. They taste it and they go, yeah. tell them it's not nice, but it's a salty, fishy taste. Now. We're going to get into the testing. Let me go back onto here. Okay. So get a spoonful of the salad master out, put a drop on everybody's spoon and explain the taste. Explain the taste at the same time. So you must tell them what they're going to taste. So would you all agree that we've put the same, let me move this back so I can get them all in. Okay, would you agree that we've put exactly the same into all four? We've put water and bicarb into all four. Would you all agree? Yes. So what we're going to taste here is water and bicarb. So out of, listen to this. Let's go to your new salad master one first. Out of here, you've got, wait for me to count to three before you taste. What you're going to taste here is water and bicarbonate of soda. One, two, three. Now, their brain is now searching for water and bicarb. And guess what? Their brain and their taste buds will find water and bicarb. Tell them it's not nice, but it's salty, fishy taste. Now, let's go next to the stainless steel one. If they've got stainless steel, do this one next. Reason being, it looks the same as Salad Master. So this time, we get them to taste and wait. You must tell them what they're going to taste. So this time you're going to taste water, bicarb, but you will also taste stainless steel. So you tell them what they're going to taste before they even taste it. So their taste buds and their brain is searching for stainless steel. So when they now taste it, they go and their brain goes, bing, I can taste stainless steel. But here's the question. This is the powerful question. Everybody write this down. Oh, got my pen off. 
where has that taste come from? Where has that taste come from? Because when you ask that, what's the answer? What Abraham, let's let's role play it. So um, what you'll taste here is water, bicarb and stainless steel. One, two, three. OK. Now, let me ask you, Abraham, where has that taste come from? Hmm. From the pot. That is what they'll answer. It's not us telling them it's come from the pot. They are telling us it's come from the pot. OK, let's now move on to the aluminium one. Now, this time, again, we have put exactly the same in. We have put water and bicarb in. But this time you're going to taste water, bicarb and aluminium. One, two, three. OK, where has that taste come from? From the pot. And what you'll also notice is they taste different. So far, we've put the same into all three. And out of Salad Master, we've got water and bicarb. Out of the other two, we've got different metals. And like you said, Abraham, they have come from the pot. Let's now move on to the nonstick or the cast iron or whichever one. This time we've put the same in. But this time you're going to taste water, bicarbonate, soda and plastic and chemicals. One, two, three. Again, what question? Okay, pause that. What question do we now ask them? Where has that taste come from? Yes. Because the customers will answer the pot. And this is where you say the statement. What we are not showing you here is that these taste horrible. What we're showing you here is that they taste different. We've put exactly the same into all four. So they should all taste the same. Would you agree? Yes. However, they don't. Let's go back to your new salad, Master One. Taste it again. All you will taste is water and bicarb. One, two, three. It's just water and bicarb. In the others, we've put water and bicarb and we've got metals, toxins, plastics and glues. Again, we're not showing you they taste horrible. We're showing you that they taste different. Right. And pause this time and let the customers answer different. That is a powerful pot test now. Because you're telling them what they'll taste before they taste it. Then you ask them where the taste has come from. And then you do a little summary at the end saying we've put the same into all four so they should all taste the same. Would you agree? Yes. However, they don't. We've put the same into all four. And out of Salad Master, we get water and bicarb. But the others, we get water, bicarb, metals, toxins, plastics, glues, etc. What we are not showing you here is that they taste horrible. What we're showing you here is they taste different. This is why we're giving the information that, that nobody wants you to know. So you can make the right decision for you and your family. That's why it says it in the, in the text. Okay. I mean, this is not on any scripts. This isn't on them. And, and, and I will never train you something that isn't on a script because as, as a trainer, that's what we've got to do. But I'm going to explain this to you. And if you want to use some of what I'm saying now, I know this is being recorded, you can. Ask them a question. Why do you think we don't taste these when we normally cook? So let me ask you, Abram, why do you think we don't taste these when we normally cook? Maybe the things we add. Exactly. Have you ever tasted your food and gone, oh, whoa, that's not nice. Get some more Maggie in. <laughs> Get some more something into there. We all have. Let's be truthful. Everybody on this call with old pots, that's what we do in the past. 
Have you ever had a meal round your friend's house? You come home, you cook it the identical same way, yet it doesn't taste the same. Hands up if you've ever experienced that. You have a meal around a friend's house, you come home, you cook it, and it doesn't taste the same. Okay, we think it's our cooking, but it's not. They could have done it in stainless steel. We've done it in aluminium. It's the background taste. Let me ask you, if you do your jollof rice, do you have a, a special pan that you do your stew or your jollof rice in? Do you have a specific one that you use? Or not? Don't worry if not. So I know some people do, some people don't. Sometimes they've got a stew pot. And if you do the stew in a different pot, it tastes different. That's because of the background taste that is altering the taste of the food. Okay. So we now go back into here. So this is the appendix. So you get them to taste each one next to stainless steel. Take a spoonful, put a drop on everybody's spoon. When they taste, you'll begin to taste steel. Focus on the steel. Normally you wouldn't taste it because of the salt and pepper and spices, etc. Okay. One of the biggest causes of pollution, so this is the summary at the end now. One of the biggest causes of pollution comes from our regular cookware. It's the last, last place we would look to. A customer of ours said, um, I buy all organic food that, to keep the pollution out, and then I cook it and pollute the food myself. Think about it. If the salt and the grit on the roads can react with the metal on our cars, then the minerals, alkalis, and acids in our food will react with our cookware. We can't taste it because of all the seasonings that we add to our food. Now you can see why we use 316TI titanium steel. It's a very, very high resistance to corrosion and pitting and helps to protect the quality and purity of our foods. So to keep pollution out and to keep the nutrients, okay, carrot juice, to keep the nutrients in. That's why the cooked carrots taste like raw carrots. Okay, go back to flip chart, last paragraph. So you see there, that's where we went to do the tasting. We now do this. We now do this section here. So remember the carrot test and the juice from it. If we could keep most of this carrot juice um, in our food and all of the things we've just talked about that we know are bad for us out of our bodies, do you think we would feel a little bit better? Yeah, of course we would. But I hate to say this, but what we're really doing is we take all of these and we put them into our food and then we put that into our bodies. Is it any wonder that we don't feel too good? But what do we do with the carrot juice? We throw it down the drain. So if you actually think about things, we're doing things backwards. We're doing things in reverse. You wouldn't put contaminated fuel into your car. So why do we do it to ourselves? The only reason is we didn't know. Well, folks, all we can do is give you the information so you can make the right decision for you and your family. This section here, and I, I do see it missed off quite a lot because normally after we've done the tasting, we flip over and we go to the, the next part. This section here is very much like a closing statement in a court of law. We're summarizing what we've done with the pollution test. But there are many things which, when you look at it, and what I'm going to do is let me send them over now. Let me send them over straight away. Um, uh, where are we? Um, food pharmacy. Um, I need to send them over. They haven't sent for some reason. Um, MJ. Um, where are we? Neo Continental. Okay. Two. 
Okay, so I've now sent over two videos of the pot test. I think they're in the right order. Um, let me... Okay, have they come through? Maybe they're, they're still sending it on my phone that they're still sending. I've sent a full video of me doing the, the actual pot test itself. So what I want us to do within the next seven days or so, and we're going to, again, we'll run it as a um, uh, uh, homework topic, is have a go at doing the pot test. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. That's one thing I always say. Never be afraid of making some errors. But really, when you look at it, all I've done is I've followed the exact script on the back of the flip chart. And then when it comes to the tasting, we must remember, tell them what they will taste before they taste it. And then once they've tasted it, can anybody remember the question? What question do we ask them once they taste out of here? What do they, what do we ask? What do, they, what do we ask? What has that taste come from? Where has that taste come from? Hey, and I could hear it in the office and Abraham said it as well. Powerful. That is the powerful question. Because the customer can only say my pot. The only place it can possibly come from is the cookware. So by saying where has that taste come from, the customers now go. Oh, my God, it's my pot. But remember the message. And this message is so strong. We are not showing them that it tastes horrible. What we are showing you is it they taste different. There you go. I can see you. Abram mouthed it and I can see the people in the office. This is the message. Once you understand this, you deliver the pot test in a completely, completely different manner. When you deliver it like that, the customers truly go, OK, I get this now. It's not that they taste horrible because, again, they can say, well, this one doesn't taste as bad as that one or or that one doesn't taste as bad as that one. So I'm going to use this one because it isn't about whether they're tasting horrible. The main purpose is they're tasting different. Does that make sense? Bear with me, guys. Just took one second. Let me let's see if I That's a very powerful train that is ongoing. I hope I'm making our notes. And this train is being recorded. So I'll expand that um, the recording of this training, we're going to put it in the forum. And I need you to go over it. In, my wife must have thrown it out. I've, that's why I put those on top of the cupboard. When it comes to the, the different uh, cookwares, it is. This one doesn't taste as bad, okay? But the other ones taste worse. But the message that we're getting across with this isn't that they taste horrible. It's they're tasting different. Once the customers understand that, this is when they go, I get it now. Any questions? Any questions on what I've gone through there? Yes, questions. Any questions? But think about this, and, and, and Kate, if you do have any, yeah, please, yes, please, please come forward. Yes, please, 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 please. I know it has been said, but how do you react to a customer that says, at least this one is manageable, because we've seen that they taste different things. But now, when it comes to the to detect long, Apart from the stainless steel, this one is lighter, it's manageable. They're not telling you to consent, but how can you react to it? Well, if they say that this one isn't as well, bad as if this they one. say that this one isn't as bad as this one. Yes. Is that what you and mean? Okay. Says, this one is manageable. Yeah. Um, if they say this yeah. one isn't as bad as this one, I'd simply say to them, then I'd simply say to them, yes, the fact that, yeah. let's just mute it off, just so that we, and then unmute yourself again. Sorry, we get an echo that comes through. I would simply say to them, 
you're right. This one doesn't taste as bad as this one. But we're, again, we're not showing you that they taste bad. I'm showing you that they're tasting different. Would you still like some stainless steel in your food? Or would you like no stainless steel in your food? Which one would you prefer? So that's the question that I would come back with. It's not that they taste horrible. Yes, you're right. This one doesn't taste as bad. But would you like some stainless steel in your food or no stainless steel in your food? The customers then would really say, well, no stainless steel in their food. Another objection that can arise is where somebody would say, well, my family have coped with it for all these years. What, what, what about them? And it, this one is a... a, a you're sort of you're, you're treading on eggshells a little bit you say well yes our parents never had these but did our parents or our grandparents did they develop illnesses throughout the years did they have aches and pains that they couldn't explain possibly sometimes we don't feel so well it's not life-threatening but would you rather keep them out or would you rather keep them in and give yourself a better chance of having a healthier lifestyle? That is the question. So then they understand it. Yeah, because let me ask you all this. Hands up who's ever felt not so well. And you can't, you don't quite know why. Okay, and I don't mean because you've had too much rum. <laughs> okay. Or too much beer or wine. Sometimes we don't feel great. We feel, the phrase that I use, and it's what my, my, my grandmother brought, I feel under the weather. It, I don't know whether that's a British phrase or do you use that in Nigeria? Oh, I just I feel under the weather today, meaning I don't feel too good. I don't really know why, but I don't feel too good. And that is the message that we're getting across. But very valid question. What do we do if the customers still say, well, that one doesn't taste as bad as that one? So, yes, you're right. This doesn't taste as bad. But remember, I'm not showing you that it tastes horrible. I'm showing you that it tastes different. Out of Salad Master, all we got was water and bicarb. This one, we got water, bicarb and stainless steel. Would you like a little bit of steel in your food or no steel? No steel. Great choice. Great choice. No steel. So now the customers understand how uh, or the message that we're getting across. But this is the powerful thing. And I loved it when Solomon mentioned it this morning to include recruiting on the back of this, because you can say to them, um, and, and more shows, do you know anybody who would benefit from keeping stainless steel, non-stick, and aluminium out of their bodies? Do you know anybody who would benefit from that? Wonderful. Well, look, um, we've got two options. I can either go and cook for them on my own, or... You can actually come and do some of the presentations with us and earn an income off the back of it. Would you rather I did them or would you rather earn some income at the same time? Because when you offer this to people, this is when they can go, well, yeah, I know a few people who would who would like this. OK, well, well look, would you rather I just went to cook for them on my own or would you rather um, uh, you have a hand in it and that way you can earn some extra income? Which one would you prefer, me to do the shows on my own or you to get some extra income as well? Would you rather I do the shows on my own or would you rather have a hand in it so you can earn some extra income as well? Really with this, because they might say, no, I'd rather you just go and cook the shows. Well, that's fine. But if they say, well, yeah, I'd like to earn some extra income as well. Wonderful. Let me put you in touch with my managers and they will be able to explain more to you. How does that sound? Don't try and do all of the talking about booking partners, consultants, trainees, six shows in 15 days, 30, 90. Don't try and do all that yourself. Let Nelly and Solomon do that for you. All you've got to do is go, I'll tell you, what, let me call my manager now and let me let me see if they're available. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Solomon. How are you doing? Yes, I'm just with um, Ocosmos. Yeah, he said that he'd like to earn some extra income after he's just seen the pot test. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you have a quick, are you free to chat to him? Okay. 
or her or comfort or, or um, whoever it may be. When you're chatting to these people, this is when they or Martha or, or Gideon or Aiken, when we're talking to these people, don't try and oversell the opportunity. One of the biggest mistakes we make is by overselling it. If it sounds too good to be true, it often is. Let Nellie and Solomon do the do the do the legwork, as you could call it. Do you understand what I mean by the legwork? Let Nellie and Solomon do the convincing. I don't like using that word convincing, but you understand what I mean by using that word. So simply ask them, do you know anybody who would benefit from seeing this? And if so, would you like me to go and cook the shows um, on my own? Or would you like to uh, have a hand in this so you can earn some extra income as well? You'd like to, okay, wonderful. Look, let me call my managers. Um, and they'll be able to give you some more information. How does that sound? Okay, call them now. Or you could say, I'll call them at the end of the presentation, but let's strike while the iron is hot. Let's introduce them to Nelly and Solomon. But this, and, and remember when we talk about uh, recruiting, we must be offering the opportunity five or more times throughout the entire presentation. Do you know anybody interested in earning a free set of salad master cookware and you can earn commission at the same time? Uh, I, were those the words that we chose for, for you guys in Nigeria? I can't remember whether we did or we, we changed it slightly. Um, I think we did change it slightly, didn't we? Because it, somebody said that it, it maybe go against what you're, you're saying in Nigeria. But there is income that you can earn. Maybe not commission. I think, did we take commission out? We put income in. Was that a different office? I can't remember. Income. Yeah, in income. So um, uh, do you know anybody who'd like to earn a free set of salad master cookware? And you can earn income at the same time. Ask them five times. But this time here at the end with the pollution test, this is dynamite time because now they're tasting it. They've had the taste. They've seen the, the presentation. They've uh, tasted the carrot test. They've seen the cooking. They've tasted the food. They've now tasted this. <laughs> they now go, oh, my God. OK, I can do this and I'm going to be truthful. This was the moment for me that I went, I can do this. Because until the pot test, I was sold on the cookware, but I wasn't going to buy it there and then. I had no money. I was going to get it in the future. But once I tasted that, I had to find a way of getting it there and then. And earning it was the only way that I could do that. So any questions Any questions on, on today? Any questions? It's a lot of information. Yes, I have a question, sir. Certainly. I have a question. Yeah. Okay, during the pot test, um, which is more preferable? Should we cover the pot or leave it open? That's uh, number one. I've I've never closed them. I, I've never done that. So I've 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 never I've never seen that done before. Um, if they've got lids, I normally leave the lids off. There's no. Right? Do you cover them or do you do you leave them open, Gideon? Um. Sometimes I leave them open because some some customers will ask you, should I cover? Yeah, they usually um, ask. Yeah, there's no real need to, to be truthful. There's no there's no benefiting in. I can't see there being a negative to covering them. I, I, I don't see that. Um, so but yeah, leave it off. Leave it off. It, there's no problem with leaving it off. Um, OK, second question, sir. Um, what about in a situation whereby the customer brings a glass cookware? And it's ceramic cookware. Yeah. Um, okay. So what you're going to taste from here, from the, from, uh, let's say this is, I haven't got one, uh, but let's imagine this is a glass one. <clears throat> so what you're going to taste here is water, bicarb, and you will taste the chemicals and the metals from the glass. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. So where has that taste come from? So again, it, it, it's exactly the same process as, as the other ones and with ceramic it's the same with ceramic you get like a, a chemical taste because they mix chemicals into the ceramic it isn't just pure ceramic that you're cooking on they mix the glues and chemicals and so on so from this imagine this is the ceramic um so gideon this time you're going to taste the water the bicarb and the chemicals that come out of the ceramic every time you cook one two three okay where has that taste come from gideon 
and they would they would say from the pot. So I've I've even done it. In, I remember the first time I ever saw ceramic. Um, I can even tell you the, the 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 family that it was for. It was a for a couple, and they were brand new ceramic. They'd been to a, a, a food show. They bought them. They were still in the wrapper. They were under the stairs. They went out. They put them on, and they were proud of them. And they tasted the water out of the ceramic. I didn't know what taste was going to come out, so I tasted it with them. I was intrigued to find out. I'd never seen ceramic before. It was horrific. So, so it's they claim that it's non-stick and ceramic, and it, it's it's a pure surface. It's it's chemicals. It's the it's the the um, uh, the porcelain, but it's mixed with chemicals and so on to to make it heat resistant and and everything else. Um, so yeah, but great question. But it, it's still the same process. Tell them what they'll taste, and then ask them where the taste has come from, where it's come from. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Have those videos come through, guys? Did they come through? I think they have. I've, I've got them as delivered on at my side. Yeah, they have come through. Wonderful. So you've got me, and, and, and please don't be afraid of making mistakes. I want everybody to join in with this. And, and I'm going to say it. It's not optional. It's mandatory. Because the pot test, I'm going to be truthful. We've got to rehearse it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because if we get it, if we make it confusing, we can undo all of the good work that we've done in the previous two and a half hours. If we plant a seed of doubt in the customer's brain again, it will undo the work that we've done in the previous two hours, two and a half hours, three hours. But don't forget to offer the opportunity straight after. Now, if they say, well, do you know what? I'm not interested in that. Say, well, wonderful. Well, do you know anybody else who would, who would benefit from what you've just seen and tasted? Yes. Hey, let's go and cook for them and then we can get you some free gifts. Do you like free gifts? Wonderful. Fabulous. So don't miss the opportunity to then get more recruits and more shows off the back of that. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. It's now over to you. Uh, what time should we put the, the deadline for the video, Solomon? What time should we say? Should we say 9 p.m.? next Tuesday night or before then? Is it Sunday? No, Sunday. Uh, 9, 9 p.m. Monday night. Monday night. 9 p.m. Monday night. But guys, don't wait. Don't wait until 8 p.m. Monday. Let's, let's, do you know what? For the next hour, let's do some training on this. Let's do some training over the next two hours, three hours, four hours. Do the training while this information is still fresh within the brain. Don't wait until five days down the line because the information will be will be um, less uh, in the forefront of our of our minds. OK, I, I'm going to go and eat because I've got another training in in 10 minutes now. So so quarter past quarter past one. I've got another one to go to. So God bless you all. Um, get this right. And it will truly start to cement in sales now <clears throat> to eliminate those people saying, I'll get back in touch with you. Oh, let me let me sort up my business first and then we'll get back get back in touch. So God bless you all. Nelly Solomon. God bless. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks, thanks, Andy. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Bless, bless you. Abraham, everybody in the office. Benny, Aiken, Gideon, and Martha. God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.